Hi everyone, Robert Kajiwara here, and today I would like to talk about George Whitfield. That's right, George Whitfield, the 18th century American evangelist. I actually think George Whitfield might have been the first American ever to go viral, and I will explain why. I know I normally don't talk about 18th century American evangelists on this channel, but uh, this is part of my PhD in history program and it's required, so please bear with me. But also, it, I think it's very interesting. There's a lot of parallels between uh, the life and work of George Whitfield and what we're doing today as millennials. A lot of you uh, might not know too much about George Whitfield, but you might have heard his name. He's a very uh, iconic figure in uh, U.S. history. George Whitfield is best known as a charismatic itinerant preacher and evangelist. Uh, he is perhaps known as the greatest preacher of the first American Great Awakening and one of the greatest preachers in American history. He is often referred to as America's spiritual founding father. What a lot of people don't realize, though, is that Whitfield was also a shrewd businessman. He had a good business mind, and he used that uh, to his advantage in order to help promote, expand, and maintain his ministries. Whitfield was born and raised in England, and when he first started his ministry activities, he was actually not well known at all outside of his own hometown. So how did he become... America's greatest preacher of the day. That was largely due to newspaper advertising. While he was still in England, Whitfield uh, realized that he had offended a lot of the older established clergy who ran the churches and ran uh, England's spiritual uh, community of the day. And so they refused to allow Whitfield to speak in their churches. But this actually worked to Whitfield's own advantage and began preaching outside instead of in church buildings. Whitfield was famous for his booming voice that could be heard a long ways away. And so this attracted a lot of passers-by uh, to come and hear him speak. So by preaching outdoors, Whitfield was able to attract a much, much larger audience than he would have had he been speaking inside a church building was able to draw crowds out of nowhere. He was such a good speaker. In Boston, he attracted a crowd of 20,000 people, which at the time was a record in the American colonies. As he traveled, Whitfield would bring large quantities of his own printed sermons, letters, prayers, and other written materials. These printed materials helped Whitfield promote his revival meeting. And by selling the materials at the revival meetings, uh, the revival meetings also in turn helped promote his printed work. Through the combination of his excellent speaking skills, his charisma, and his uh, mass distribution of printed materials, uh, Whitfield achieved a level of popularity that would have been rare, perhaps even unprecedented, by other clergy of the time. So Whitfield's public speaking and his distribution of printed materials uh, that was kind of like his version of social media for the day. He really became popular and, as uh, I like to say, he went viral in the 18th century. Whitfield recognized that uh, religious people and churches of the day uh, didn't really utilize business well. I guess they were afraid that business was not spiritual or not holy, whatever. Uh, but, of course, that's not true. So Whitfield utilized business in a way uh, that other uh, clergy just were not willing to. And it worked out really well for him and his ministry. Whitfield's printed materials were so popular and successful that printers often refused to print the materials of his rivals or critics or <laughs> other, other speakers, including people who were against the revivals that were occurring. Dr. Vaughn Scribner, a history professor at the University of Central Arkansas, likens Whitfield's revivals to the American theater of the day. Though religion and theater were often seen as opponents and in contradiction with each other, uh, 
Dr. Scrimner sees it as the opposite. He actually thinks uh, Whitfield and the theater had a lot in common. They both exploited the consumer revolution that was occurring in both Britain and the American colonies of the day. Both Whitfield and the theater traveled far and wide as quickly as possible in order to reach as large of an audience as possible. They presented themselves and communicated with the mass public in a way that was easy for the masses to understand and relate to. Whitfield's use of theatrics and drama in his speeches uh, were criticized by other members of the clergy, much in the same way that uh, the older generations, baby boomers and, and uh, generation Xers, uh, often criticize millennials for our ways of using social media and the, the things we say and do. Whitfield was not the first minister to use commercial language to boost his ministry activities. Cotton Mather and Benjamin Co Coleman had done this prior to the Great Awakening, the generation prior to the Great Awakening. So they would kind of be like the Gen Xers of their day. But Whitfield seems to have done so uh, in a way that was much more successful than anything that came before him. Uh, part of that, I think, was due to the era in which he lived. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, there was a consumer consumerism going on uh, to, in both Britain and the American colonies in such a way that had never before happened. He was iconoclastic. He was creative and imaginative. He wasn't afraid to do things differently. Uh, than others. It brought against him a lot of criticism and attacks by his critics, rivals, opponents, and other <laughs> jealous uh, uh, clergy members, but he also experienced a great deal of success. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more of our videos. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.